Deepwater Asset Management's Gene Munster joins us now. Gene, um, it, it's great to see you. I mean, you know, if we want to unify uh, Apple and Tesla being longer term laggards, it might be that they just don't feel very directly leveraged to the current phase of the AI boom. How would you treat each one? Well, I think that both of them will have a profound impact from AI. And if we start with Tesla, uh, this, of course, the, is not a growth period for the company. Uh, deliveries this year are going to be down slightly from last year. It's just a remarkable uh, revelation related to the slowdown in the business. But I do believe that FSD is a massive opportunity for them. And that, of course, is powered by AI. If you look at what they've achieved on FSD over the past three months, it has been remarkable. The acceleration in miles driven that grew 30, or 73% in the March quarter. That compares to a 56% growth in the September quarter and 64% in June. So we see an acceleration of autonomous miles driven off of a higher base. That is an indication that something is happening of that, of course, is driven by AI. When it comes to Apple, this piece is uh, a little bit more of a windy road when it comes to AI. And I think what we learned this week relative to OpenAI and Google was remarkable, especially OpenAI and what they showed with their multimodal real-time demos. And I think that that really underscores the importance for Apple to partner initially around AI. I think that that will be a welcome change to the products. But in general, I think that the first chapter, call it the first year of Apple and AI, is going to be a partnership approach to really enable this generative and multimodal features across the product line. So, uh, Mike, I think they're both going to benefit, but at different degrees. And more broadly, Gene, you know, I was talking about this yesterday, where if you looked at the, at the, the, uh, the kinds of companies participating in AI in one way or another, it has been the build out of the infrastructure that has been very obvious. We're going to get NVIDIA's numbers next week. And then you have some implementers like Meta uh, or others that are much more tangibly deploying uh, various kinds of AI. And then you have every other company that says they have an AI strategy and it's going to maybe fuel productivity and you don't really see much effect. So I guess how would you think it stages from here? Well, I think maybe at just the highest level, maybe start at the market level and then talk about a couple of the companies. But at the highest level, I think the way this stages out is that we're in the early stages of what is a three to five year bull market. And that may seem out of touch given the market run that we've had more recently. Uh, the run more recently has been part AI driven, part uh, uh, interest rate driven. But if you ultimately believe in the substance of AI is going to be greater than the hype, then the market is going to continue. So I think that the broader tech trade is going to continue to do well. This is going to end in a spectacular bursting of a bubble. And, but I think there's a lot of wealth creation that can happen between now and then. But as far as some specifics, I just want to highlight a couple, uh, uh, just one dynamic amongst, I think, some of the bigger AI companies and specifically related to Meta and Google. And these are both part of our flagship Titan product. But the, those two companies are unique because their AI future is not dependent on someone else. Uh, they both have their own models, Llama, of course, and with Google, it's Gemini. But if you go to Microsoft, Apple, look at what Amazon's doing, all those are requiring uh, third-party mo uh, models to really power what they're doing. And so I think that's one dynamic. So when I think about just really cutting to who are going to be some of the biggest winners in AI specifically, I think it comes down to Meta and Google.